I know not towards me. I know. So, Shabriel's doing this thing up here, jumping over a big snowfield tree and then into a landing. I thought this is a good opportunity. I'm going to shoot a sequence on this one and then maybe show you on Photoshop and Lightroom how I, what my post-production workflow is on that, how I build it all together. So, I'll sort of show you from start to finish. I'm shooting with the 1635. Um, 1000 f4 i'm shooting jpeg just because with raw uh, this camera's only got a buffer of about 12 shots and i think she'll need about 20 for this jump so it would just start slowing down the shot rate if i was shooting raw so i'm shooting jpeg it's all right um and what i'll do is i'll right? hold the camera okay. still and she'll basically jump through and i'll just keep shooting i'll just keep firing from the start point to the end point of her jump so there'll be about 20 single shots of her jumping through and then after all I do is join all those layers together in Photoshop and pull her through so basically there's this row of images Ready? of her no so I focus on the middle point of the jump so it's one plane basically I've set it up one plane so it's not she's coming from further away and landing closer so I can just focus on one point of the jump and that should be sharp right through and uh, she's nearly ready to go all right you ready okay we are ready yeah, Cheryl. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah! Thump! That's what we want to see. I picked the right moment to get a sequence. The thing with shooting sequences is it's always a bit of a gamble because if she crashes on the landing, you obviously can't use it. But the way you often have to shoot sequences is if she doesn't land it, you can't really use a single shot of it either. So it's a bit of a gamble. And it uh, just comes down to experience to know when's the moment to try and get a sequence and when it's best to try and get a single yeah, shot. Yeah. I got it right this time. Fucking uber stoked on that. Uber stoked. Elderly. You! This is just a little more. Oh, it's a good gap. Sweet, mm. and then you see I'm like a brother. Nice. Banger. Cool. Banger. You stoked? I'm stoked. Hey, I'm back in Austria now. I've returned from my few weeks in Japan and China. Um, now it's time to catch up on computer work, editing. Um, so I'm going to show you the post-production process I use for building a sequence, the one of Shereel Mas that I shot in Japan. This is the gear I use. I've simplified my gear that I travel with. It's a MacBook Pro couple of two terabyte hair dri hard drives. I use a iPad here as a second screen. Just helps with editing if you can have two screens, drag and drop things. And that's pretty much it, no mouse. Just use the trackpad to do everything. Keep it simple, travel light. So to start off with, I have here on my screen the original shots that I shot. This is straight out of the camera, JPEGs. So these are the the originals here. So first thing I'm going to do is drag them into Lightroom. It's a program I use to edit. Just um, I don't know if I need to crop or drag everything in. Go to develop, and then I'm not going to do much on this picture because it's pretty much good. Check that it's sharp, 100% zoom. It's fine. There's a lot of snow in the air, so it's so I just try and bring out the whites. I'll bring up the shadow. I've taken a middle picture here. I'll just a middle of the sequence. Um, I'll just get that right, and then I will just make all the other ones exactly the same. Bring that up slightly. Bring the contrast, maybe clarity a slight bit. You notice a bit of vignette will start. I'm shooting with a 16 mil lens, so you get that a little. You can get rid of that pretty easily. That'll be cropped out in the end anyway, probably, because sequences end up being cropped. Let's change the, the blue. Luminescence makes a big difference always in snow, as to how much shadow and blue colours you get. You can change the green on a jacket, you'll see it changing there a little bit. And then the red of the board I'll lighten slightly, about there. Um, I don't change the saturations at all. This is the, the high 
lights and high tones. Darks I don't want to do anything with, but it's just pretty much fine how it is. I'll pretty much leave that where it was. Alright, that's pretty good to start off with. You can always adjust the finished image as well. So I just push sync on that, I've got all this set up how I always have it. So all those shots just end up being the same. Um, it's the good thing about Lightroom. Photoshop I used to hate that. It was such a mission to try and get all shots looking the same. And these ones are all pretty much identical now. So now I go back into library, everything selected, export. I'm going to export them as TIFFs. This is a little uh, high file size to send out afterwards to magazines. Uh, resolution 300, no watermark, no post processing. And then. Um, okay, finished. Quit Lightroom. So the pictures are now here. I'll make a new folder of TIFF. Drag them all in there. I'll open Photoshop. File. Automate. Photo merge. <clears throat> this is a very fast way of doing it. This is very simple, very easy way of doing it. The computer basically does it for you. Take TIFF, select all the images you want to have in there, and push OK. Now the computer does its thing, it takes a couple of minutes. OK, the computer's done its work. Everything is here, you'll notice it's got all the layers. They're all lined up, they should all be lined up about right. So basically it starts with the last picture of the sequence. So I just deselect everything else. And there's the second shot. Select the masking tool, brush. X. And so I'm getting rid of everything back to there. Zoom. Brush again, smaller brush, X, change the layer, and now I'm bringing Cheryl through <coughs> from the layer behind. So she's just getting pulled through onto this front layer, and it's, it's up to me how much I want to bring through. In this case, the front layer is fine. This is basically the picture, and Cheryl is going to appear up through here. So I don't need to bring through anything else. So that's that's one done. Move on to the next one. She appears out of the frog here, out of the spray that she kicked up. And so this is where you, you have to do a little bit of work. You don't want to make it look unrealistic. Put the opacity down, change the brush, and just get rid of that shadow a little bit. So, so. Next one. And I shot it reasonably wide angle, give me some room around it. it it's made it very easy to, to edit. Zoom in a little closer on this one. As, um, as her speed slows down, you'll notice that as she touches down on the snowbank, her speed obviously slows down, so the pictures get closer and closer together. And down here, where she's starting to speed up, are getting further apart again. So you'll see in the upcoming pictures that she'll start to overlap a little bit, which isn't a problem. It's just a little bit bigger on the brush. Depending uh, what it is and how much the overlap is, sometimes you have to drop drop a pic every second picture you have to drop out because it you know it doesn't the overlaps will be too much that it actually hides a lot of what you're trying to show. So you'll drop out every second picture and, and cancel the overlap. So that's too much I've taken away now. I'll put a bit back in here. 
It's my opacity just to overlap it. That's good. Next one. And now she's right on top of the snowbank. This will probably be her where she's traveling the slowest. So it's nearly overlapping with her there, but still not. That's fine. We need to change to a small brush where it's so now it's just just starting to touch, just starting to overlap slightly. Um, but it won't be a problem. It's it's only a, a, a tiny overlap, so you can just hide that behind the next layer. Yeah, see so her board on this one. Her board's actually going to overlap. That's no problem. You just just go around like that. Yeah, there it is again. The leg is nearly overlapping with the board. It is slightly. No drama. That's her exiting the jump. This is the jump here. So that's nearly there. Now it'll just she'll start getting smaller because she's disappearing behind this actually started all the way over here but that's not a problem um, I'll just bring all that through and the second to last layer now alright so that's the finished oh not quite there's always a few little defects down here you have to check things out Okay, that's the one. And that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So now to finish it off, put a layer, flatten image. That gets rid of all the layers, squash it down to one. Much easier to work with. Smaller file size. Better crop. Because I'm putting this on the video, I've made it 1920 to 1080 already. Drag that down a little bit. And we're good. That's the finished product. Yep, I'm happy with that. Save as. Share a nice thing. One. And I'll save that to desktop. And save. Very good. So this is how I do it and how it works for me. Um, please feel free to let me know if you have a better way of doing it. I'm always keen to learn, hence learning by doing. But I hope that was informative. I hope you got something out of that. Yeah, yeah hope I hope you enjoyed it. Ah, oh, dude, you can't get that method. what he was trying to do. Nice one. The jump is pretty much done. Like, a lot of people hitting the jump, 